Howdy doody everyone, welcome to the first video on Neog. In this series of videos we're going to be looking into how Neog works, uh, how to install it, how to use it, uh, also how to script it uh, in later parts of the series. But basically the goal of these videos is to make you a master at this project. So let's begin. What even is Neog? This is a question that gets thrown around a lot, uh, mostly because in the beginning Neog was uh, heavily compared to org mode, which you can even see in the tags here, right? <laughs> this made it kind of difficult for people not familiar with org mode to grasp what the project was about, so let me try and explain. Essentially, Neog is one big interface for a plain text markup language uh, that we built called Nork. The markup language itself can be used for some very simple and lightweight tasks, which makes it an awesome substitute for Markdown, if you've ever heard of or used that for task management before. And Norg is very embeddable and intuitive, which not only means you'll have an easy time grasping it, but will also have high chances of finding support for the format in external applications. Uh, the only limiting factor right now is that Norg is still relatively new, uh, but that's something that will get better with time. Now Neorg itself? is an ecosystem on top of Norg, and it exists to kind of supercharge your workflow on top of just using the plain format. Uh, Neorg can manage directories of notes, it can track journals slash diary entries, look up and manage links between files, track tasks and projects, create types of documents, etc etc. Uh, I could go on for a little longer here, but I assume you get the gist of it by now. If you need to structure anything in your life, then Neorg probably has some functionality for it. Should the concept excite you, which uh, let's be honest, okay, who wouldn't be excited at this point? Uh, let's move on to the first step in our journey, which is the installation. So to install Neorg, you want to hop down into the installation slash quick start section, uh, choose your plugin manager of choice. Uh, usually it's gonna be lazy because most people nowadays use lazy. Um, copy paste the config and run the synchronization command that your plugin manager uses. Uh, for lazy this is lazy sync and during installation you should see new of them automatically install passes so i thought i'd dedicate a small kind of section of this video to the passes um because for most people these passes are just going to install perfectly uh but for a few people especially mac users uh this command right here that lazy is going to auto run every time we reinstall or resync this can fail and understanding why it fails is the key to debugging and fixing the problem. So New York Sync Passes is just a nice wrapper around the trees to install command, which you can access by running ts install and then a language name like Lua or Norg. But New York Sync Passes ensures that you're pulling in the correct version of the parser for the current New York version that you're on. This way you never get desyncs where the parser is too old or too new and the Neorg version is lagging behind, the two are always kept in sync. And in case you get errors when starting up Neorg, I always recommend running this command manually uh, just to make sure. Now in case you get any compilation errors, there are a few things that you have to know. So the first thing is that Neorg is a bit different than most other parsers because it uses C++14 for its scanner, which, for example, on macOS is actually too new of a version. Uh, the default compiler that ships with macOS does not have uh, the capabilities of compiling C++14 code. So the way you can fix it on Mac is uh, just by going to the readme and scrolling down a bit to the tree sitter section, troubleshooting tree sitter. Uh, now here, you can basically see the instructions. You want to set your CC uh, environment variable or your C compiler environment variable uh, to a compiler that you, for example, installed using brew or what have you. Uh, just make sure not using the inbuilt macOS uh, compiler because that's not going to work. My biggest recommendation is to just export it in your shell uh, of choice and then just relaunch NeoVim and rerun this command and it should hopefully succeed. Now in case it doesn't, there are a few places that you can consult. Uh, I'm not sure if it's here or on the uh, Norg repo, um, but I know there are a few issues uh, here where you can see people fix their passes. Yep, it's actually on the Tree Sitter Norg repository. 
Uh, if you go into the issues tab, you can see a few open issues about errors during compilation. Uh, scroll through them a little bit. The chances of you finding your error there are very high, and I'll leave a link in the description to this page. So if your passes have been successfully installed, you've completed the first step on your journey to New York. So now let's get accustomed to the configuration because there's a bit to digest here. I'm using the Packer NVIM example here as reference because it's the most verbose and just nice to, to follow along. So in the require New York setup call, which you should be familiar with if you've used essentially any plugin uh, for NeoVim, the setup is just kind of a standard function at this point for every plugin. Uh, we're telling New York to set up with a table, a Lua table, and inside we're telling it to load a set of modules. So modules are kind of mini programs or sub plugins that run inside of New York. And they're basically like the Unix philosophy on steroids. They're just a bunch of programs, uh, building blocks that are put together and they build up the whole of New York. So why is this important to you? Because in the future, when we're gonna be extending New York, some basic knowledge of these modules is going to be immensely helpful. So I think it would be nice to just put it out there right now just acknowledge that these things exist and that they provide a single bit of functionality to Neorg. So what are these modules that we're loading here? So first we're loading core.defaults and we're telling Neorg use the default configuration for this thing. Uh, core.defaults is called a meta module. It's basically a module that houses other modules inside of itself. And it's here to provide just the default behavior for New York to work and for New York to be usable. It's always recommended to load this module unless you have some very specific things you do not want to load. But that's for the advanced section. We're not quite there yet. We still have a lot of stuff to go over before we get into the advanced stuff. <laughs> so next up is the concealer. This thing is fantastic because it converts some markup elements in our documents into nice icons so that we don't have to look at all the stars and slashes and all that. It just hides them away or beautifies them and converts our documents into eye candy. Uh, Derman is the last module we're initializing here, but this time we're initializing it with a configuration of our own. This module is very important because it's basically the lowest level component of any organized workflow. Derman is short for directory manager and it basically assigns some workspaces. It assigns a name of a workspace to an actual location. And this data is then used in many other modules to figure out where your Norg files are stored and how to behave. So with the default config, um, a single workspace is defined called notes and its location is in the home directory slash notes. Now Neorg, if it ever has to use this uh, directory, it's gonna auto create it for you so you don't have to worry. So with the config out the way, we can finally write our own first document. Now this is going to be more of a sample document than anything. Uh, to get you accustomed with the syntax because the syntax is the core thing that you want to learn uh, before you start learning any of the workflows. For now we'll just start with the basics and then ramp it up as we continue the series. So where do we begin? I just launched NeoVim in my home directory, uh, an empty instance, and we're going to run the neorg command. So colon neorg provides a bunch of functionality. It basically exposes the internal APIs of modules. And if you hit tab, you can see all of the currently available commands. Now, the one we're interested in is workspace. And if you tab complete, it's going to show you your workspace names. Uh, there's always a default workspace and you should see your workspace present here. With the default config, this should be notes. And if you hit enter, it will take you to the index file. So an index file of a workspace is basically your entry points. It's like a table of contents for the whole directory. So you can create links to other files from here uh, in case you want to create a wiki, or if you want to track a, a journal, you can also have links to all of the journal entries in here. So the index.norg file is basically like the index.html file if you've ever done uh, web development. It's just the start point. Now in here, you can see I have some text, hello world. In Norg and in many other markup formats, you can just write text and it's going to be interpreted as text. So I can say, this is my first note in Neorg, exclamation mark. And congrats, you've just written a line. Very exciting, I know. So let's do something more interesting. Headings are the first thing worth knowing in Neorg because they allow you to structurally represent your notes as a tree. So if I hop on over to the line before, uh, type in 
an asterisk, space, and then a heading title, initial notes, and escape, you've just created a heading. And the core.norg.concealer module has kicked in and converted the asterisk to a lovely icon. Now, apart from just a level one heading, you can create level two, three, four, five, and level six headings by just repeating asterisks. And you can go on for infinity. So I can create underneath the level three heading with heading three, and underneath this heading, you can have the text, this is my first note in New York. Now you can use the inbuilt uh, NeoVim equals operator. If you type in equals equals on the current line you're on, it's going to indent it. And all of your text is now nicely structured as a tree. You can also hop on over to any of the headings and type ZA. This toggles a fold on the current heading. And you can press ZA again to unfold. So you can imagine, right, you're in a lecture and you have something like history and you're taking notes, the teacher's speaking. You can say, oh, okay, I'm learning about history. We're currently learning about World War II and we can learn about what happens to the Soviet Union during this time. And here below, you can type what happened to the Soviet Union during World War II. Text, text, text. And when you're done taking notes about the Soviet Union, you can come in, create another third level heading and type Germany. And already you have a nice structure. You can hop upwards and fold this in case you want to. Uh, you have to sometimes refresh the file because uh, NeoVim is a bit buggy. But there you go. Now, apart from headings, uh, another thing I'd like to teach is some basic markup, stuff like bold, italic, underline. Uh, if you go to any text and surround it with asterisks, it becomes bold. And if you move your cursor off, it hides the asterisks and you only see the bold version. If you replace these asterisks with uh, slashes, it creates italic. Underlines, and it underlines, obviously, and dashes, and it creates strike through. Obviously, you can merge these in case you want to create an italic strike through that also just so happens to be bold. I can do that. Now, you can do this anywhere in the headings, in the regular text, what have you. Now, in case you have many workspaces, you can already start imagining some basic form of workflow, that New York workspace and then the second workspace name, and you automatically get moved to the index file of the other workspace. So you can easily manage many different uh, areas of focus with this methodology. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Now, in case you want to create a new note in the current working directory, you can use the local leader nn command, now, local leader, not many people have it bound. Uh, you can consult the help file to find out what the local leader is. It's essentially a leader specific to NORG uh, documents in this case. Now, NN stands for new notes. Uh, I have my local leader bound to the comma. So if I type comma NN, it's going to prompt you to enter a new note. Now, let's say I call this history and hit enter. It's going to take me to the history.norg file and I can basically take all of my stuff, paste it in here, save, and then in my index.norg file, I can create a link to the history file. So getting a tiny bit into the advanced territory here, but you could create something like uh, a heading called notes, and underneath you could create a list item, which is done with the dash, and you can create a link to a file by using two curly braces and inside of colons, typing history. And if you hit enter, it's going to take you to the file. Now I can create another note, like biology, and in biology I can say uh, mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, my favourite sentence of all time, and in the index I can come down and create another unordered list item and type biology. Hit enter on it and it takes you to the file. So that's all there is to it right now. In the next video, we're going to discuss some more advanced syntax elements, stuff like to-do items, a little bit of telescope.nvim integration. Uh, we're also going to discuss how to configure a few of the modules, like the concealer, and we're going to learn everything there is to know about links, because links are actually surprisingly powerful in Norg, uh, and we've put a lot of thought into them. And you'll quickly see how important they are in your day-to-day -day notes. But for now, that's all. Thanks a bunch for watching. Uh, this is my first video on YouTube, so it might be a bit rough around the edges, uh, but I'll improve as I go. Shout out to the people on the Discord server uh, who have been endlessly bugging me about creating a video. 
Uh, without them, I probably would have procrastinated to infinity. So thanks to them. Uh, link to the Discord is in the description as well, in case you want to join. Uh, we always have a lot of fun there. See you in the next video. Ciao!